Ultrasound has been validated uh, as a diagnostic modality in giant cell arthritis and the EULA recommendations endorse ultrasound as the first step in the diagnosis of GCA. The article that we have had uh, accepted in the Annals of Rheumatic Diseases goes a step further. It devises a quantitative ultrasound halo score, the South End halo score, that can measure the extent and severity of ultrasound abnormalities in patients with giant cell arthritis. Once we had devised the score, we then looked at patients who had already been entered as the South End cohort in the TABL study, which was set up several years ago uh, and was run as a multi-center study with the key question of whether ultrasound was better than temporal artery biopsy in the diagnosis of GCA. We looked at 89 patients who entered the TABL study and of these, 59 were confirmed to have giant cell arthritis at six months follow-up. We quantified the extent of ultrasound inflammation by one, the halo count, which looked at the total number of uh, temporal artery and axillary artery segments uh, that showed a halo sign and we uh, computed a composite HALO score. In terms of the HALO score, we decided that we would grade the HALOs as follows. Uh, we looked at the 20%, 40%, 60% and 80% percentiles of HALO thickness uh, from the South End cohort. From these, we derived uh, cutoffs by which we were able to look at each halo and then grade it as either grade zero, i.e. no halo, or grade one to grade four. The total halo count in the temporal arteries, therefore looking at all the six segments bilaterally, uh, the maximum uh, halo uh, score would be 24. And as I've exemplified over here, uh, here you have a patient uh, without GCA and the ultrasound shows uh, completely normal temporal arteries and completely normal axillary arteries. Um, a key finding of giant cell arthritis is the halo sign, as you can see it here in the temporal artery or you can see in large vessel uh, giant cell arthritis here the thickening of the internal medial complex again, which is the halo sign in the axillary artery. What we did was using the 20%, 40%, 60%, 80% cutoffs, we came up with the four grades of the temporal artery uh, and the axillary artery halos. And uh, you can see it here. These are the temporal artery segments, common temporal, parietal, uh, frontal uh, on the right and similarly on the left. And uh, again, we also looked at the axillary arteries. So the maximum HALO score with the temporal arteries was 24. The maximum HALO score for the axillary arteries was 8. But to equate the two, we multiplied the axillary artery HALO score by 3 to derive a total score of 24 as well. So we had a total HALO score, including temporal arteries and axillary arteries, of 48. Then we looked at the associations in the table patients and we found that both the HALO count as well as the HALO score correlated very well with uh, inflammation and it also showed features uh, of association with ocular ischemia. In particular, the HALO score showed better association with uh, inflammatory markers such as the CRP as well as with ocular ischemia. Both the HALO count as well as the HALO score, were able to identify patients at low risk of ocular ischemia, i.e. less than 5% risk, or high risk of ocular ischemia, i.e. more than 30% uh, risk. So this is the first time that we have shown that ultrasound in a quantitative way may be used to show not only uh, diagnostic capabilities, but also association with disease severity and disease extent. We are taking uh, this uh, finding forward 
and we are now looking at a prospective study where we will be using the HALO score to look at prognosis, long-term outcomes, as well as whether the HALO score can work as a monetary tool. Uh, this is the HAS GCS study and this is already running in the United Kingdom. It plans to recruit 280 patients and controls and we have already succeeded in recruiting 30 patients to this study. In addition, I would mention that the use of biologics, particularly the use of tocilizumab in GCA, imposes certain problems with disease assessment since tocilizumab directly blocks the acute phase response. So we need independent imaging parameters to monitor disease activity in these patients. We feel that uh, the ultrasound HALO score is a very good instrument that can be uh, applied for such monitoring purposes. To this end, we are now studying the inter-rater and the intra-rater capabilities of the HALO score and this will be done uh, at the 8th International uh, Symposium and Ultrasound Workshop that will be held at Southend in March 2020. Thank you very much.